Cash Color Camp is a high level of conversation on live hip hop daily TV. Before I get into this interview, let's get into this lighting. Like, 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 like this, this is lit as hell. Like, her Groovy Lou, congratulations on that. Y'all put this lighting package together. I am so impressed. Me too. Me. Seriously. This is the first time I've seen it all turned on. This is dope. Yeah. So um, I actually, well, clearly I have a guest in the building. I don't just want to be rambling about lights for the for thirty minutes. But I have my guest in the building. Hey, Emma. We could though. Yeah, we really could. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Emma, how you doing? How today? you doing? Howdy. I'm well. Um, I had a chance to be with you this past Friday at Creative Loafing for Friends in High Places podcast, and um, I was I was blessed to be able to do it. I remember when. Joe kind of text me one morning and with you on it. And I was like, whoa, Joe is very about action. <laughs> yeah, we had Joe, Joe cried on the show. Did he really? Oh, yeah, like real, like authentic tears. I was like, this show's going places. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> How are you making people cry? Yeah. So we got to talk about on, that. We had you on, which is obviously, like, you know. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. For that episode to come so for those who don't know, stay, um, tell us who you are and tell us what you do. Uh, my name is Emma Carr, and I do many things, um, one of which is a podcast podcast. Um, it's called Friends in High Places and it's through Creative Loafing Atlanta and it's basically just a platform to um, for awareness mostly. It's it's about Georgia and the industry here and um, and the more that I, it's my favorite subject and the more that I talk about cannabis with people the more I realize that a lot of people don't, they're such noobs like they yes. really don't know a lot. So the, you know, the conversation is really endless at this point and you know, it's been given this platform, so it's kind of... That's awesome. So you, you jumped into cannabis. I'm sure you have... I'm going I'm to take a big assumption that you have tried cannabis before. Yes. <laughs> what was your first time trying cannabis? And I guess, um, how does cannabis work for you in your life? Um, probably like most people in high school. Um, I definitely felt like it, it changed things immediately for me. I had a lot of anxiety, social anxiety. Um, and then... You know, I found myself going to concerts and at festivals and like dropping out of high school and like going to see fish and just being a huge <laughs> hippie. Um, but I had a plan and I ended up going back to school and all this stuff. But it was just it it definitely freed things up for me. And, That's good. So you, you 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 did you finish high school? No. Really? So I didn't finish college. So I I, I, I applaud dropouts who still managed to be, do yeah. something. <laughs> I graduated from college. I have a journalism degree. Good. Um, so you know. And I told my, my parents when I dropped out, I was like, I'm going to go back. I just don't want to do high school. So. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could have taken that route, man. I was always a little stubborn. I tell people, I'm still officially six credits short from my actual bachelor's degree. Yeah, that, everybody gives me that look. But I, when I say senior year, my, my, before we came to second semester, I was interning at Charlotte Magazine. And I remember telling somebody... The creative loafing at the time you were at creative loafing. Oh, this Charlotte? yeah, this is right before oh, I got time fired. You got fired? <laughs> right yeah. before creative okay. loafing fired okay. me. Uh -huh. <laughs> but yeah, I did. I remember telling people, "Look, I'm gonna be a writer. I don't necessarily think I need this next semester. I'm just gonna go do that." Mm -hmm. And it took ten years later for me to actually do it, but that did happen. I did walk away from. Congratulations. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, when it comes to writing, you know, what made you? How, how did how did you find your voice when it came when it came to journalism, and what did you know that you wanted to cover, and, and what you wanted to tackle? Um, I, I found my voice through um, originally working on working, being other people's voices for brands, <laughs> doing content. Okay. Um, and then I think as my name, you know, kind of got out and people liked the style and then it, it led to where it is now. And um, that's not an really exciting story. But, <laughs> yeah, that's um, through social media and content writing and... Um, yeah, I do a lot of the social media at Creative Loafing as well, so it is all kind of, you know, it ties in the content. Yeah, the world. and there's been a whole lot of, there was a little transition at, at Creative Loafing. Um, I know, like you had mentioned to me when we was on the show, that there's now a separation between Creative Loafing Atlanta and Creative Loafing, I guess, Charlotte. Mm -hmm. um, you, how's it, how is it like to be able to watch the transition of, of, of Creative Loafing, and how do you feel being part of that process? Um, it happened before I came on with them, mm -hmm. so I didn't really feel the transition, but um, I love where Atlanta Creative Loafing is at now. At the core, it's a super small team. Um, I, myself, am a contractor, but I do a lot with them, and um, it's, we work daily with the publisher, the editor, it's a, it's a really close family, and also they pretty much say yes to anything. Like <laughs> if you bring them an idea, and it's, you know, and you have, and you're energetic about it, or they've just been a really, um, they're, they're great cheerleaders, I think, for people who want to start something new or have an idea. They've, 
they have their ears open. That's they're, good. They're, yeah. That's good because I, I was going to ask, you know, when you decided to bring the concept of friends in high places to Creative Loafing, like what was the initial reaction when you gave the concept and said this is what the podcast is going to be? They kind of pushed the writers to start podcasts. They wanted to start doing more podcasts, and mm. I was reluctant. Um, I love podcasts, but I just didn't see myself doing one. And then I said, okay, fine, but I'm going to do it about weed. You know, that's really <laughs> the only thing I can see myself talking about consistently and not getting bored. And, and like I said, the conversation is endless. And, um, and I don't think they really thought that I would have that much content or that much to talk about, especially keep me, trying to keep it localized within yeah. Georgia and people making moves in Georgia. Um, but, you, I mean, I'm sure you're having the same problem. Like, there are not enough hours in the day to talk to the amount of people yes. that are really making things happen y yes, here. Yes, yes. You know, there is a lot to be heard that a lot of people just have no clue that's happening and what, you know, it's... There's a lot. Yeah, Atlanta's a real undiscovered place when it comes to cannabis right now. I mean, well, it's, just, it's almost like Waka it is Wakanda. It's like it's like we're being covered by this fog, and all this stuff is happening here, but I don't necessarily believe, know that the rest of the world gets that we actually have our own infrastructure when it comes to media, it comes to businesses. Like, all this already exists here. Totally. Yeah, I think I've, you know, I'm successful if someone even reads, like, the caption of the podcast because I'm like they probably didn't even know that you know such and such was decriminalized or this yeah, or that so yeah. even you know to be able to give out the headline yeah. is like and I, I like how you, I think we have similar audiences because um, when you mention that you you speak to people who are who are newbies and I, I call mine kind of curious. There's, there are people, that, yeah. there are people who kind of they want to know. I mean, they they understand it, but they still want to know a little bit more. They're still you know kind of new to this. When you, how does it feel to be able to reach out and be able to brand out con and create content for people who are brand new to this whole world, man? Like like is there pressure on you when it comes to that or? No, I love it. I mean, it's um, I, I've been somewhat you know I've been active in this community for a while um, you know was was there alongside Kwanzaa a good bit with the decriminalization and or you mentioned E and urban hippie mm -hmm. and you know all this stuff it's it's um no I get really excited I guess is my, is my answer to keep to to share this information and good. yeah I'm a little high and kind of lost my train of thought. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> we made sure you got lit before you got here. I, I like Thank I like you. to knock the edge off for of people. So you have had you have Kwanzaa on the show. I know you've had um my man um the the coolest canapanua on the planet on the show. Uh, who are some of your favorite? What are some of your favorite episodes so far? Um, honestly, I've loved all of them. I've gotten something from all of them. You know that I didn't expect. Um really opening up the conversation because there's only so much you can read in someone's bio or, or Google or whatever. Um, so it's been interesting getting in depth, having an in-depth conversation with people who I normally wouldn't. Yeah. Um, you know, we're so over connected these days, but the intimacy of the conversation is gone essentially on the internet. So talking to them in person, you know, hi human. Yeah. It's, it's, a good, it's a nice experience. Um, I feel like the conversation opens. So um, there, I had a woman on, Sophia Sabsowitz, and she runs a gallery, um, it's like a, it's called Pulp over on the west side, and okay. it's um, this really cool bookstore gallery, and they were having a cannabis photo exhibit, but then I also mm -hmm. learned that she goes out to um, Humboldt County and, you know, picks for half the year and has like, you know, the, the murder mountain. And like, and then she also has this like amazing gallery, weird bookshop in Westside. That's random as yeah, hell. Yeah, so like, I, I just am learning like all this stuff about people that, okay, I knew what the internet said about you, but yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Getting to know people. So what else have you learned about yourself since doing the show? Um, that I know a lot more than I would have probably given myself credit for when it comes to cannabis. Um, yeah, it's, like I said, a lot of my audience, they're noobs, canon curious, so um, people really just day to day, I, I think, you know, we live in this nice bubble, and I think everybody knows what we do, and everybody reads what we do, and everybody pays attention, but they're really not, they're in their own lives, and have many other things going yes, on, so, yeah, yeah it's, um, yeah, I feel like I can call myself an expert. <laughs> That's good. Right? Well, you know, you, you actually are on the way. You know, the, the more you speak to people and the more you introduce these folks, you actually become the expert, the influencer now. And that is amazing. <laughs> yeah, think about think of yourself as that. I'm a I'm an influencer now. Have heroes like you. Ah, 
ah, I get the Visa Vice Hero. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you feel like the um, the direction of the show is going to go as we move past quarter um, Q4 and we move into 2020? Like, what, what are the plans for the show? Or do you have any other any do you have any that you already have set in plan, set in work? Um, no, it's been kind of nice just taking it show by show. I don't have a long term calendar. Um, you know, Dr. Um, the good doctor. Oh, Dr. Know. Hodge. Yeah, Dr. Hodge. He and I have been in touch. Would love to have him on. Um, you know, Coach Harris or even Hollywood. Oh, I'd love to have her Please on. have Coach on the show. <laughs> yeah, <it's good> <laughs> please have Coach on the show. Um, yeah, so there's definitely people I have in mind that, you know. Coach is one of my favorite people to just hear talk, like, because he mm-hmm. talks so like this. And man, you talk about an epic episode, and you talk about 60 minutes that'll turn into um, easily th- two hours. Easily right, with I'm Coach. <laughs> easily with Coach. So I could definitely recommend m- recommend that for you. Like, Coach would be great. Hollywood would be amazing as well. Mm-hmm. But there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, like I say, the, the, we're watching the community grow in front of us, and I think that that's the most impressive thing to me. When I first started the podcast, we was, uh, was it late 2016 going into 17? If somebody would have asked me when, how, you know, when it comes to legalization, when it comes to even hemp, how far down the road or how progressive do you think Georgia would have been? I would have said not at all. <laughs> like, we'd have been the absolute last state. Like, if every other state voted, we'd probably be state 53. Like, we'd be that far down the road. <laughs> but I'm, I'm shocked. And I think a lot of the work is done because of people like me and yourself, that we are spreading a conversation in a city that needed the conversation. And now the city's adapting to it. And that's great. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't like to, you know, take too much credit for the work that's been done, but I do like spreading the word. But, I mean, there, honestly, I think that there are so many people, like I said, that we can, that, you know, underground heroes that people don't, that should be household names yes. that you and I are, have the, the privilege of, you know, speaking with and giving yeah. a microphone. Speaking of heroes, you know, you got to have Stanley on the show, the, the can of edit. Yeah, okay. a, I'll take anybody who's in my life. Ah, Stanley's a super yeah. interesting person, man. Like, okay. yeah, he's super interesting. Yeah, I haven't had a medic on yet. Oh yeah, Stanley. Stanley's gonna give you a whole lot of information too. Okay. Yeah, he's he's epic. Um, do you have a bucket list of guests of guests that you want to have? Like, if there's a, a person that you could pull out and and have them be there, like, who would those be people be? Um, man, not really. You you sent me this question and I wasn't. There's no one that really jumps out. I mean, Jack Carrere, whatever. Oh, <laughs> um, would be a good one. Activist, great strand. Yeah. Um, maybe if if I want to be like funny, I had a friend tell me once that um, he worked on the set of The Simple Life with Paris Hilton, and the only way that he could get her <laughs> to sit down and listen to the notes for the day was if he rolled her joints for her, and claims that she smoked more weed than Snoop. I believe that. So, and she seems I'm high like, all the she time. She and I never had anything in common before, but I'm like, I know she smokes good dope. <laughs> she does. I bet you she so, smokes really good weed. Yeah. And um, have you ever seen the show she has on Vice? Um, no. She has an amazing show on Vice that she okay. produces. That's about um, social media, st- social media stars, and people are trying to cross over from social media world to real world, okay. and the struggle in that life is is oh man, like they yeah, and they focus in the sounds- cap. They focus in L.A., so it's like you're watching people try to struggle to make rent and pay bills, but they have 100 million views on Instagram and all that, you know, and they spend their whole day taking pictures and trying to be an influencer, but can't pay rent. And that, yeah. that, that, I think that's a real story. you got to have a balance. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I have to. I, I run, you know, social media. I'm on it. We're on it. Mm-hmm. Everybody's on it, but you got to. You got to turn it off at some point. I don't know. Yeah. How hard is it for you to promote? You know, because social media, it has been kind of, especially Facebook and Instagram, they're kind of um, wishy-washy when it comes to cannabis, any kind of mm-hmm. conversation when it comes to cannabis. Being a person who has to spend a lot of time on social media, like how much trouble have, have you bumped into when it comes to social media? Well, <laughs> um, Instagram rejected my sticker, my little Giphy sticker. Oh, did they really? Instagram. Instagram. Um, Giphy allowed it and you can search for it and find it um it's just my little sticker and the smoke is like animated that's cute it's really cute um and yeah but giphy's like hey we're cool with it but instagram doesn't approve everything but um so that's in a in a minor way um luckily knock on wood i haven't had any um any issues i'm not i don't post a lot of heavy cannabis content per se yeah um so maybe that's why, but like, 
it's mostly done through creative loafing and, and it's not too heavy because there's a lot of content on creative loafing so yeah. maybe it kind of isn't as noticed but yeah not, luckily I haven't and again it's the same thing with why everyone's decriminalized right now right because you can't prove the difference they can't prove the difference no, okay. no CBD not at and all THC. Not so at all. like oh, you're gonna tell me my photograph what am I promoting you know what if I'm smoking a CBD flower joint like that's legal. I've had so. to argue that. Me and Nicole, like, well, at this at current moment, Facebook has suspended my, my account, so I can't promote any posts. Really? And they did it because, and, and let me tell you, the post they, 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 they flagged had no weed in it, no smoking. There was not even a conversation about consumption. So I was, I've, I've tried to get an answer from them. They'll never give you a real answer as to why any of this happened. Facebook police. Buddy. You just can't call them that's the thing like when you message them they'll send you the exact same blank message and then back it's like so many and then it's like did this answer mm -hmm. your question exactly oh. no it did not answer my question i want my stuff back yeah <laughs> like very upset i understand i don't like facebook i hate facebook yeah yeah look the only one i totally understood was q money and they was like q money's music was way too violent for them it, that's what i said i was like but q money has his own page and you never take down his own page like, right. you know what i'm saying it's like, yeah. Q Money, Q Money's video, I, that made sense. But every other one, I was like, as a matter of fact, at one point I told Nick Cole, this is what we're going to do. No image of weed at all. And they were still like, flag, 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 no, no. Yeah, no. I was about to say maybe I haven't gotten flagged because I'm not posting like Bud or whatever. And but you don't either. So. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. They just hate us. Hmm. <laughs> they just hate on us. We the media. They have, they have problems, man. They, they have um, problems. If you look at my personal Instagram, it's mostly like, you know, me in like ridiculous costumes and stuff. Anyways, not and, a lot and, of weed and kicking and kicking over scooters and shit, man. Being a pure rebel. Mm, they were in the bike ride. <laughs> they deserve it sometimes. I, I really thought that you was a champion of of, of the world when I saw that because I was like, Aww, you know, how many times thanks. I walked by them them scooter stands, I just want to do a whole Karate Kid kick. I got a lot of love on that. I think yeah. I'm gonna just walk around town and just start kicking them all the time. No, yeah, well, I, like it. then they'll blame you. Yeah, <laughs> they'll, they'll definitely circle back back to creative. I was a loafing. fan of them last summer, and now like everyone I know has gotten hurt. So yeah, it, I don't. I'm I, I'm not a fan of the fact. I feel like they 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 crowd in the streets and the sidewalks at this point. Like they really yeah. need to either regulate it. And I hate regulation. But they need to regulate it or do something at this point. Also, if your child is like young and under three and on the belt line, like hold on to. Them. Oh yeah, don't have them like just like this while you're <laughs> speeding down a, a, a lane. Yeah, yeah. yeah nah. Do you um do you have a favorite strain? Um, any kind of cheese? <laughs> you know, when I first, somebody first approached me with cheese, I didn't want to smoke it because I was like, like, I didn't like the name. Like, like fucked with their head a little bit. come on, yeah. dog, don't give me cheese. Yeah. Um, I'm not super picky, to be honest. Um, you know, it's, mm, yeah, I, no, not really. I love, I prefer sativas, but, mm -hmm. um. No, I don't have a favorite strand. Is that weird? No, that's not weird. I, well, I told you, mine's is any OG. Like I'm a I'm a I'm a OG yeah. person. Like OG something cool. Like don't mix. I like sour diesel. Yeah, I mean sour's sour was good. Sour diesel's good. Um, I just I prefer inhalation. You know, give me that delta nine. So oh, wait, are you um are you a dabber? Or are you do, how, how do you consume? Like are you do you like smoking flour? Are you a oil person? I love person? dabbing occasionally. Like mm -hmm. if I'm at someone's house or somebody or, or somewhere and they offer me a dab but um <clears throat> i can't dab regularly i just it's too intense for me and i like wouldn't get off the couch <laughs> um i love flour yes. all day me too yeah blunts joints um tip most often a bowl because it's convenient and like you know but it's flour yeah i was you know vaping and loving i got a pax pen i was kind of liking that oh turn up i like um, pax but now all this vape stuff Oh, yeah. does it scare you? You know, hearing all, hearing all the news it, about it, it. At first, I dismissed it, and now it's more and more. It's a little bit more is coming out. And then you think about, like, the long term. There is no long term, you know, uh, research on this because people just started vaping like 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah. So I just know that flour is easy to get, it's good. And it gets me high, and I know exactly what it is. So mm -hmm. until we figure out all this vape stuff, <laughs> until like, we get all I'm this shit together, yeah. no, I, I totally feel you because I feel like um, this this is another issue that lays you have to lay right at the feet of the government. This is a legalization. If you just legalize, you could just start doing actual research. You could actually start doing some actual regulations rather than have people just try selling stuff they find on Amazon or on Alibaba and start That's selling crazy. it. 
Yeah, um, regulation, like literally right now, people can sell anything and call it cannabis, yes. call it CBD, call yes. it hemp. And it's like, don't go buy that gas station garbage. Yes. You have no idea what, you know, Speaking I'd rather of, like eat McDonald's. At least I know what kind of what kind of garbage. The gas is. station down the street is proudly, proudly promoting <laughs> that they have CBD products with a, st- with a big sticker that says lab tested. Proudly okay, saying that. Well, you know, I'm not, okay, there we go. I'm not going to say all gas station stuff, but just be mindful of, even if it's not a gas station, like anywhere, just, yeah, if, if there aren't labs on it, if you ask for labs and they hesitate or there isn't, is, or there isn't a lab test, then I wouldn't mess with it. No, I, I, I honestly, if it's, I don't, I wouldn't purchase from a gas station because there's so much other stuff I could buy. Like if I could buy gas, hot dogs, and CBDs, like, yeah. just, uh, give me a lane, man. Go like support your local <laughs> cannabis. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so um, if somebody wanted to follow the podcast, they wanted to um, support it anyway, as far as listening to it, um, downloading any episodes, where can they find the podcast? It is at creativeloafing.com. Um, or clatl.com. Um, it's on Instagram, Creative Loafing Atlanta. You can find us there. Twitter, somewhere. I don't like Twitter, sorry. You don't like Twitter? Um, I'm not a Twitter fan. I feel like there's a lot more negativity on Twitter. Oh, and they allow it too. Yeah. Negativity and porn. There's like trolls. nothing but it on yeah. Twitter. Trolls. <laughs> nothing but, yeah. yeah. Trolls yeah. and hardcore porn somehow lives on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Twitter, no, Twitter, Twitter replaced yeah. Tumblr for that. For you'll literally, porn? you'll scroll through Twitty timeline sometimes. It's like, what the hell am I looking at? Like, yeah. Makes me wonder who I'm following sometimes, too. I like Instagram, and I like that they're talking about getting rid of the likes or hiding it. Yeah. You know, I think that'll, that'll help people out. Oh, that'll drive people crazy. But only the ones that need it. Yeah, well, there's a lot you know, of people. If it bothers you, then maybe you got, you know. There's a lot of, again, Paris Hilton has a whole show about people okay. who have hundreds of thousands yeah, of likes and can't find a, a you know, they're, they're basically um, hobosexuals. You know, just going from place to place trying to find a house. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now I'm intrigued. I'm gonna go watch it. <laughs> so, if I appreciate you coming by tonight. Will Thank you, you have a chance me. to hang out with us and smoke a little bit, I, kick and watch the rest of the show? Duh. Yeah. Duh. Uh, thanks. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Emma, for coming by. Again, support Friends in High Places, uh, support me. Creative Loafing and all the amazing work they do do in the city. And again, thank you for coming by tonight. Thank you so much. No I problem. mean, this is such a dope setup. Yes, yes, yes. Wait, thank you. Lo- thank you, everybody, for p- tuning in. And that's Cash Color Camp. It's a high level of conversation sponsored by Peak Relief. All right, so we're going to take some pictures and you're going to okay. do a drop. And then after that, uh, yeah, you can sesh up and watch the cool. rest of the show. Kick it with us. Yeah. Let me move this. What happened? The Eagles, the 49ers, and the Patriots have reached out to the Browns about Odell Beckham. They already? And they, and, they are, and they are listening at the moment. Hey, did you see Odell Beckham last night just drop the ball? Yeah, listen. Okay. <laughs> All right, so anything? Hey, yeah. Are you? Did you get a picture of her shoes, Nicole? Uh, no. You've got to get a picture of those shoes. My hand is awesome. I can actually, I was going to change them the other day.